So, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, today, uh, we're going to discuss chapter six. Oh, I forgot to join this format. Yeah, chapter six and chapter 11 of the R package book. So, uh, the objectives of the chapter here is this is primarily to show you how the code in R package is different from the normal R scripts. Uh, so we normally write R scripts. So how can R package script should be? Is it gonna be the same with way we write R script? Um, it will also, after showing us that this is not the right, the right way, it will show us how to uh, extract usable code and the logic script and put them in separate files so that they can be used as a package. Uh, along the way, we'll see um, chapters uh, or scripts called Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, uh, which they incrementally increase with how good they are. So yeah, where the Alpha is something that works, but is not good. And Charlie, Bravo is something better. And Charlie is something that uh, uses helper function. And the last one, which use full page uh, package. Uh, I've not written it here. Right, so here, uh, it's just a script that is used to make some analysis in R. Um, basically, the analysis, as you can see, we have a file called swim.csv, and this is a file. So the content of the file is just um, the name and pitch and the temperature. And someone just wants to make some kind of analysis. In that way, they classify the analysis based on whether it is US or UK, as you can see here, and also they change the temperature from uh, to Fahrenheit. They use the conversion rate, as we can see here, they change this and save the analysis. So this is a typical way we do um, uh, R in some ways. Uh, there isn't any function. There isn't any uh, uh, kind of uh, separation between the code and separation between the data. Everything is in one place. So this is actually not a good way to do that as we are moving toward a better way to package everything inside a package. So why this is not efficient? Very possible they do similar processing. So it is quite possible people that do this kind of thing, they, do, they calculate the temperature, they uh, classify observations, they do this very often um, today, tomorrow, but um, therefore this is a kind of repetitive tax and they will run all the way this code, which is not efficient. So why this is in, uh, it's not efficient, they do similar process over time, better to create a function and use in package. So one way to make this analysis better is to create a functions and isolate several parts and put them in a function and call the function later to uh, abstract much of the code. So that takes you to the next version here. We do the first version, which is called alpha. So the next version is a version which is more efficient. Uh, it does not just work. This one works, but it's not the best way. So the next one works and it encapsulates, creates some function uh, which works better. So we call this one Bravo, and uh, uh, as you can see, the first thing, as you say, is isolating data logic in object and function. So here, we want to isolate functions. So here is like, we create a function call that do the conversion from temperatures. We also create a function here. I mean, we do method here after, and also we create here a function call uh, Ophel files, and we save. And at the same time here, we read the data, which is different object. So what is different between the first one and second one? As we can see here, we don't have any function. Here, the way we do the calculation is not manual, just R code, we do the calculation. And how we save the file here, we they have a timestamp. They want to um, concatenate timestamp to each file after they finish. And they just write the CSV here. So here we create something new. Number one, what we do is we create a function that do the conversion. We also create a function that automatically uh, save the files and attach uh, stamps. So this is 
um, our script called Bravo. It's different from the previous one. It is beta. So that's why we say here, why Bravo is not beta, but still this is not a beta. Reusable data and logic are inside the analysis. So you can see here, the first one, um, we, we don't have any function. We, we don't have everything. But here at the Bravo, it creates some functions and some logic, but it is not beta. Why? Because our functions are inside the same scripts. And one thing you should uh, always have is to have your function outside the scripts. So that's why we said this script is not better uh, because they do have maybe repetitive tags and they will do run this the same time. The only difference is just we create the function and put it in the same script. So let's go to the better one, uh, better one which is called Charlie. So Charlie is a script, but it's not using the functions inside the scripts. It's used what is called helper functions. Helper functions are functions that are not embedded inside our scripts. We call them inside our scripts to execute some tasks. So as we can see here, we said the next step is to move reusable data logged out, outside of the analysis script. So here we want to remove all these kind of functions from this script. We will create external helpers and in a separate file. So what we mean by that is we will now create a separate helpers. Uh, that's what we call helper functions and put them in a separate files. So they will not be inside our script. And here we create some high level fun, uh, fun, uh, helpers here. So this is the same code with the previous one, but we do some stuff again. Number one, uh, we uh, create uh, a function called, as we can see here, cells by function. This is uh, also function that does a conversion. And this is a new function that is not in the previous code. And also we create um, another uh, helper function localized page, which is this one. It look up the data. We have a new file, CSV and stuff like that. And we join them. So as we can see here, this is a script. And this script is called a helper function. All this one, as we can see, there is no analysis here. This is only data. Uh, I mean, there is no data here. This one is only scripts or functions. And what we can do is we're going to take all of these scripts and put them inside a file and call this file a different name. Uh, so we call this file, set the file helper and call it in uh, analysis. So we call this file called cleaning helpers.r. So um, later I'll open the R studio so that we can see how it works. So now this thing, all of them here, we create a script and name it called cleaning.r and save inside a packet, something like that. Uh, or I mean, in a folder. Up till now here is not a punk, uh, package. We are not taking up a package here up till now. So we are talking about efficient way that we can minimize or we can better use scripts. So here we create our helper function called clean.r. And now here, as you can see, we source this file, this helper function file, and here is our data. So here in our script, we only have the data, but we do the same. We call this function localized. We call Salesify that does the same thing. We can see Salesify does the um, comp uh, classification US to this, and we call it localized which What well, this is the localized which it does it um, join our data. So we can see here this is a beta way. Why this is a beta way? We have the same results as the previous one. Both the alpha, the Bravo, uh, they have the same results. Uh, and Charlie in this case, but this one is much better in the sense that this script is a little bit, um, uh, it's not that uh, very much script. We only call functions and uh, uh, we can always edit the helper function file. So you can see shorter scripts. So this one is shorter. It is easier to read and modify because there is no repetitive task. So if this is the only script that we are gonna have to execute the whole of our analysis, it is better, it is easier. We can uh, re rerun this separately and without edit, with small edit and small like that, unlike the first one. Uh, another thing is that um, it is sometimes subject to say this is a good approach. So uh, as we can see here, we just create a helper function here 
and we call the helper function with source to create to run this analysis is this a good approach it's a question that um, we should ask so hardly said this is something uh, that is in terms of um, design so in terms in uh, our Thai divas design guide uh, they discuss this uh, in detail but we they say that in some time it's subjective say this is good approach but some people agree that this is good approach some may not say that this is a good approach so the point we want to show that here it is sometimes good to create a script uh, or helper functions and solve them inside your script to run a function so this is uh, why this is um, uh, a good approach so up to now we do not come to a um, package but we shows how you can trim down some lot of functions to make them easier smaller and you call now the next one we're going to look at is called uh, delta so um now we want to create a package uh, the ultimate way the best way to have some solution for the petitive tax is to create a package so now here we can see that yeah of course here we uh, ultimately we make our script smaller we just call a source file and run it but this is not the best way the best way to create some repetitive stacks is to create a package and this is what all the book is about but it, it, we, we run down some um, kind of um, motivation why we do that so as um, uh, le uh, let me share my R script uh, so let me share my R studio. Oh my God, Michael, you need to come and help me. <laughs> Ooh, how can I see? How can I? I cannot see my. I think you. Um, yes. Oh yeah. You Maybe you can. I don't know. Come back to your video. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now we can also see your R studio in the yeah, background. Yeah, but this is not the um, R script. Uh, the one I want to share is the package one. So, all right, let me. Oh, okay. I can press shift and share some stuff, right? Um, yeah, you you have to change the 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 the, the desktop. Okay. How can you share the whole desktop? Um, whiteboard advanced. You are already um, sharing. Yeah, I think you have desktop, to unshare and then you share are using again. Two different monitors, right? Yeah. I think you so have so to you have to stop first. sharing that yeah. one and, and change the other. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Um, Which one am I sharing now? <laughs> um, what should we see? Um, yeah. Our studio. Uh, we are still seeing the book down. We for... see it in the background. So there's a book down in the foreground and the R studio in the background. Okay. But... Let's let's yeah, let's continue. Maybe at the end I will just walk through the yeah. So uh, the motivation we discussed previously is basically how we can trim down our code and to have some little code. Now, as I said, the ultimate way is just to create a package. Now, how can we create a package? We see this in the first chapter, the whole game is we use this to create a package and um, we, we put the name of the package inside. And now what we can do is to copy the helper function into the new page. I think I need to, I need to do this. Is better to let me unshare, stop sharing, then stop share. All right, I stop share. Okay, let me share again. All right, I can understand. Mm, all right, so, um. 
All right, <laughs> I understand the flow. So now can you see my screen? Yes. <laughs> right. Um, okay, here now I'm sharing the book, right? Now I'm sharing the book. Yes. Yeah, right. Oh, all right, and now I'm sharing uh, an art studio, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Well. Ah, okay. So previously, what I was doing, um, I have two screens, and um, the first screen, um, everything so uh, should be on one screen, right? You, I cannot share something with. Um, uh, yeah, you you can share the both screens at the same. Oh, ah, okay. So I had to take them it into um, another screen. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Judge. When I'm using two screens in Zoom, usually I met like, for example, uh, Zoom in one screen and use the other screen for, for the presentation. Ah, okay, okay, and understand, I understand. Is the, the best way to organize during the presentation. Yeah, okay. So, um, as I said, uh, this is way as we have seen to create a package. And as we have already seen, um, these function, this uh, helper functions that we created um, in the previous case, we just call it using source and run it. So now, what we can do in uh, in function in package is this: we copy the file and uh, it's not here. Oh, it's not the file. I need to share. Okay. I need to open the, this. Is the... All right. So the next thing is we copy this file and put inside our folder. Uh, which folder should we put inside our ARP folder in the package? And now copy the CSV file we created here also as well to put it inside the folder. So this is the CSV file lookup table, and we put it in the same folder. And um, Install the package. So let's see that. Okay. Right. So um, uh, after we do that to create a package, which I've already done, uh, I what I did is um, this is a function helper function that we created and put it inside this. Uh, this is how it's done. And also, we put some kind of um, our CSV file here, which is not the best way to uh, actually do this. But hardly uh, said for the start, let's go on and do this and install the packet. So we installed this packet already. Um, so, oh, tab tools, right? Install. Okay, within. So I've already no. Um, I I think if you are already in the folder, you can like ah. empty without the. Okay, if I'm already in the folder, I cannot do that. Yeah, you 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 can let this the first argument empty. Okay. Just just call dev tools install. All right. Or use quotes and then dot right. Uh, yeah, or, or, or just to show you want to install the current folder. Ah, something like this. It's actually the, the default. When you, when you let it empty, it, it's using the, the dot. Ah, so okay. You have to, you need the code quotes inside. All right. I don't know that. Okay. So I have done that and uh, we create the package. So the aim of that is just to show us how we can use. Um, differently how we can use package. So here we now, after we have installed the package, we can use this library as we can see and do the same thing. So what makes this one using package and using the script different? They are obviously the same and save the file. The only difference between this and the previous one, um, uh, the difference between previous and this is library and this. So in the previous one, we only call library uh, we source the helper function, but in this one, we call the library within. So this is um, how we uh, advance and shows uh, how you can do it differently. Also, attaching a packet does not dump 
its function into global workspace. So having said that the only difference is this, use a library here and using uh, so there, if you run this, it will give you an error. But uh, they said uh, the error might, uh, in the book they say they have a correction because in my own case, I run this and it runs correctly. Um, so they said it works sometimes, especially, especially it, if and only if the working directory is set up to top level of the source packet from any other working directory will get error. So who can explain this? Because I don't understand why they said you will get an error, but when I run this exactly, I do not remember, I do not modify the cleaning helper.r package. I do not put all those um, oxygen uh, format they say you need to put, but it works. Why does it? Gives error. I don't know why. Can someone explain? Um, I, I think he, he's trying to address the point that if you if you run that inside the the directory where you are developing the package, it will work because you have your all, all your files inside that package. But, but if you are in another directory, it will fail. Uh, okay. So what they are saying is this. So if you look at um, our R script here. Um, yeah, so if you look at this R script here, uh, yeah, so if you look at this, uh, what they are saying is it should not be the same. Is it the way we call R script? Um, we call our helper function in package? No, this is not the standard way. Uh, they said we need to put something, is it, um, uh, what did you call it? Oh. Uh, oh yeah, you, the you need to have the export tag. Yeah, yeah, export, export, export. Yeah, so yeah. what they are saying is that here we do not specify. We need to export. Yeah. Um. Uh, let me see. Uh, get it. Uh, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, they have an example there. With yeah. The... Yeah. So this is the example. So what they are saying here is that this one will work, even though. The file we are sourcing, which is the cleaning helper, does not have the format that it does should have. And in the book, they say maybe, I don't know, they make some update that uh, they should update that uh, they put this one does not work previously, but now it works. Um, so in my own case, it works. So uh, the point here is that uh, we can see that this file cleaning helper.r works the same way as we it does work in the previous case where we just source. So now this is not the best. Uh, we need to work this. Why this one delta is not the best? Copying cleaning.r to this folder without further modification was problematic. So when we just copy our source file and just put it inside our R here, it's prob problematic in some ways. As we have seen that we only copy the helper function and put it. So why is it problematic? The outline three problem does not account for exposed and exported functions. So if you look at this one here, this code here, uh, there is no way we, uh, there is no exported function. We do not use exported function. And the reason why they said that is, um, yeah, yeah. The, the main difference would be if you, when you are doing an analysis or developing a, something that everything is in the same folder and you have your script on the on the root, root directory mm -hmm. of the, the project, uh, when you source it with the just source cleaning helpers mm -hmm. uh, you, you have everything in the same folder. So it will just work. You, you have okay. everything in loaded in your environment but when right. you move to the, to the r folder mm -hmm. um, this command source cleaning helpers would not work anymore you all right you, you would need to use source r slash cleaning helpers but th this is not how you usually do uh, use a package you you just do library package and and it will be loaded in your, in right. your environment but, yeah um, and i think I think, yes, I think if you source a pack, source a script, um, it will also automatically um, load the libraries that is needed. If you set a library um, command or just set, or it will give you a notification that the library hasn't been loaded. Where I think that is why, and I think somewhere in the chapter, 
um, Hadley says that we have to have a separate mindset in writing a function when we are um, just making a uh, an R script and an R package. Okay, right. So here we can see that he made one statement by default function in a packet are only for internal use. We need to export helper functions. So um, we need to export them. So yeah, so this is echo, another uh, one which is much better. So we have seen alpha where it is just a sequence of script. Um, we have seen Bravo where we just have some functions but um, the functions are inside our script. And we have seen Bravo, no, um, we have seen Charlie where we actually have, um, uh, uh, we actually have uh, our, our functions inside, we saw them. Uh, and now we have a Delta where we have seen, we just um, have our function, our package, but uh, we have not saw some stuff which is not the best way and it results some error in some situation so uh the last one is which is um, a working package uh as they said uh, we need to update this r cleaning helper that we put in our script how can we update it uh it is better to say so it is better also to identify the package you use actually so here you can see here the previous package uh we call library in the previous um, script we call library and we call all the library packages uh, everything we just use this and uh, which and you call lab join and stuff like that, which is not the efficient way it's not actually the way to call functions inside a package so hardly says so one of the better ways to um, do that is number one we need to change our export our helper functions number two is to actually use a better way to call uh, external functions such as Tadivas, we should use a function that we use only. We should not load the whole library. So we can see uh, this is the same help our functions at the previous one, but we modify it to meet the standard of creating package. Number one, we only use the player here. And number two, as you can see, we use this to export this help our function. And um, so here we use this to export this help our function. We use this one also to expand health and self function. This is the only difference between the oh, this one and the previous one. And this version of the packet can be installed, used, and it technically passes the check. So this package, uh, as we can see, it technically, as I said, it passes the uh, check. So when we run the Virginia uh, dev install check, this one, it will technically run, though we don't, um, this is not a full-fledged package. Which one is here? Uh, I've done oh, something. You, you added the... Uh... Yeah. yeah. So this is not a full-fledged package. At the, uh, the objectives of this chapter is not to develop a full-fledged package. The objective of this chapter is just to show us how can we extract, um, as I said, um, the focus primarily on the package R code, how it differ from R code in script. So we can see now R scripts in a normal way differ from R script in R package in a fundamental way. Number one, uh, we always call, do not always call the complete library, and we always call the helper functions using export. Uh, so this is one of the fundamental difference with that. So I think this is one of the and we have seen the sequence of how we can actually extract some scripts uh, and put them in a function. And this is the main objective of the uh, this uh, chapter. And uh, we create this function called within, uh, and it works without any error. So uh, let's move on to the next. Oh, it's almost time. Okay, let's move on to the next one, which is Virginia, uh, which is chapter eleven of the uh, R package book. And the main objective of this is the chapter explain how to create. Virginia workflow and a device of writing Virginia. Um, how do you pronounce it? Is it Virginia or what? Vignette. Vignette. Is it Vignette or? Yeah, Vignette. Vignette. Yeah, yeah. Vignette. Oh, yeah right. I, I pronounce Vignette. 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 <laughs> I'm surely not <laughs> native speaking. Yeah, I guess Michael is a native speaker because he pronounces no, no, correctly. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right. Okay. So, um, uh, it sounds French to me, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pinia. So. Uh, yes, we all know what Pinyet is, and this is not something we should go further and discuss long. Uh, so it's just a long-form guide for a package, and what it does is just to create uh, that you, uh, what you are designed to solve and how you show the reader how to solve it. So this is just uh, it is. And it is also uh, should divide function into useful categories and demonstrate how to coordinate multiple function to solve problem. So. Um, I don't know whether um, uh, if we go to, uh, I don't know, is it Bignet? Uh, Bignet, uh, this one. Uh, uh, okay, let me show the diverse. I don't know whether this is a Bignet. Let me show you something. So, So, um, is this, is it a vignette or what? It's actually a vignette that was transformed in a website. And the, the, vignette, the vignette per se is not the, this website. The vignette is the content of that website mostly. Yeah, I think vignette is more of the case study, like how and, you would yeah. practically use something yeah of a certain problem all right but yeah. this one also is a kind of self-study uh, okay this one is built separately not from binion right yeah this one that you, you are opening right now it's it, it's a website built of the vignettes mm -hmm. of the ggplot package but if you go inside the r studio or, or the r console itself you can open, open some kind of documentation that contains the vignettes. So it's, right. it's not actually dependent on web browsers and, and if, if you just use vignette, ggplot, or, or, or browse vignette, you, you will find the the, the available vignettes. And yeah, all right. So what do you now. call this? What do we call this website? That's a um, it, it's exam. it's the, uh, this website was built using an R package that's called package down. Ah, okay, okay, I understand. Package I understand. Is, a, is a package that website based on, on vignettes and documentation yeah. in general. I got you, okay, yeah. So, so the, right. the, the, the website itself is not the vignette, but it's built using the vignettes, if right. it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. <laughs> um, but and the, the vignettes itself is just the, the, document, the document that contains the, the information. I, I yeah, know. right. So if you, oh, I, I forgot the command, wait, uh, it's, it, there's a common browse vignettes. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I know that. And I was like thinking, do we convert vignette to that format? But now that you said that one is uh, built using package down. So I understand yeah. that we uh, cannot. Actually, um, that is the, most of the vignettes nowadays are built with the markdown format né, for, for, but actually in the beginning of R, markdown didn't exist. So they, they wrote like LaTeX, like latex, yeah. latex documents with uh, Swift documents or other formats. Nowadays, it's kind of standardized of using the, the markdown, the R markdown format. Yeah, so this is what they explain in this chapter. So how to yeah. create and uh, we can, see binet for package in this way and are useful to explain the details of someone package um right so there are between binet workflow um so to create binet we use this function and name the binet and this one will actually create um uh, three things um create a directory of the binet and add necessary dependency to this description and drop a bit binet um Binet in the package, binet, my binet, the name of the package, it will drop this. So in this case here, when I run it, I have my binet. Uh, when I run that and I have my binet here, and when I open this one, yeah, so this is what I will see uh, when I run it automatically, this, uh, this and stuff like that. 
Uh, so the component of the vineyard is that they have their different components. So as you can see here, we have this one here and we have this one here. We also have um, the last one also marked down. So there are three components of our markdown vineyard. The metadata, that is initial block, the markdown text, and the NIT. Uh, NIT, do we call this NIT R or NITA? NITA. Yeah, I think it's NITA. Michael, how do you call this one? NIT R or NITA? Well, I'm not a dictionary, but I think it's <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah. the the no, but, after. Uh, yeah, go on. No, no, no. But uh, I'm not sure because apparently um, the it's like the where we where we submit our packages is not pronounced Kran but Siran. Ah. And oh, it's so pronounced Siran. I don't know what's the right pronunciation for anything? Yeah, you can oh. call it the way you you want. <laughs> so, Michael is called Siran, not Kran. Yeah, it's Siran. Really? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Yeah. Don't ask me uh, why. <laughs> All right, I will not ask you why. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so as we said, um, this is the um, metadata, and this is the net, uh, and this is the okay. We write markdown. So they explained previously um, people who are using LaTeX, and now uh, they are not using LaTeX. So let's go on to the metadata. So the first thing in the metadata is the title. So you can put the title, the author, the date of the package. And the next one is the output. So the output by default, this is one of the, um, as they said, uh, has been specifically designed to work well inside the package. So I don't know if it is feasible to change this one to HTML and stuff like that. Um, do you think by default, this is what you have been doing uh, or, or else, but the book said that this is the format, the output format that has been specifically designed for the uh, package. And also, as we can see here, we have, um, um, another format, this one here, uh, which is a different, this is not the usual YAML header or YAML. So YAML, we do, uh, we put this and put this semicolon and put something, this is YAML, the correct way, but uh, you will, um, there is some unusual YAML way in this metadata. And what we only need to do is um, in this unusual YAML is we need to provide our, uh, the title of our vineyard, uh, which is this one here, just change this one uh, to change the title uh, in the vineyard, which will appear, they say, in the in vineyard index and leave other two lines as is. So these two lines, we just leave them as is. Tell They tell the R to do um, stuff like that, to use neat R and stuff like that. So uh, the metadata is composed of the, basically the title and stuff like that, and the output is with other, and just change the vineyard title. That is all about metadata. And the markdown, um, yeah, so we, as we all know, Markdown, we use Markdown to write the content, and there are many ways to write the content, a lot of um, things that we may not discuss here. Uh, they have been discussed in the chapter, uh, and um, they say that it's an easy to read and write uh, way using Markdown. So, um, but uh, we are not using Markdown, but we are using R Markdown in Vineyard, uh, so it's different from Markdown. Uh, but in the chapter, they said this one, which I don't know what is this. R Studio present a drop down menu via the question I mark icon, which offers a markdown reference. What is this? I don't know. Um, so, can someone, I don't know what the meaning of this. Um, so, let me, where, uh, where do, are they referring to this English uh, in the R Studio? Does this make sense to someone? Is it referring to the markdown cheat sheet? I don't or know. Not? Maybe it's a reference to the to that new mode in in R Studio that you can write the markdown uh, the visual editor. The editor. Yeah. Okay. The, but it's I'm not, not drop sure down. Also. But that one is not drop down uh, via question mark icon. It's not the drop down. So um, when I read the section of the markdown, I know we all know how to write a markdown, but uh, this sentence, um, I don't know what it really means. So, yeah, so I just decided. So, and the last one, which is NIT, uh, NITA, um, it, um, they actually specify some common um, 
options that are used in the package. Uh, uh, these are some of the important ones. Eval to files, that means you are you don't need to evaluate. Echo, runs of the printing of the code. Um, result hide, warning, false, all this one, we are familiar with them, error. So sometimes we may have a package with some run, um, which is basically an error, and uh, we want to run it to so that we can see the code. Um, so we can use this one to show an error. Um, Collapse is cost to true and comment. I don't know what the meaning of this. I usually put in the global output. Um, does this make sense to someone? Collapse equals to true and comment. So Hadili said he usually uses this and put them in um, uh, at the uh, global output. So does I, I'm not sure if I understand this option. Yeah, but th this option is just to collapse different blocks of code in, in one, the, the output of different blocks of code. Because usually the the markdown output, it will, like for, for each line of the output, it will print the output down and, and this collapse, it will get everything in the end of the code block. Right. It's, okay. It, it's easier to understand the logic, maybe, but there's no, if you have all the code and then all the outputs. All right. Okay. Yeah. So um, I do not actually um, uh, try to work on this section because we are already familiar with this section. And finally, he hardly gives advice for writing vignette. When writing vignette, you are teaching someone how to use your packet. You need to put yourself in the reader's shoe and adopt to beginner's mind. So I think this is very, very good um, advice that whenever we want to uh, write vignette, we should forget that we are expert and uh, just put the minds of beginners and try to understand from the lens of beginners um, the possible mistakes and how best you can write it so that other people uh, can. And one thing they say that if you write a good vineyard, you can send the vineyard to um, uh, statistical journal or art journal. I, don't, I forget what they said, so that um, you receive feedback on how to um, uh, um, update the vineyard and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that's why here you say if you write an nice vineyard, consider submitting it to the journal of statistical software or the art journal. Both the journal are exhorted and only as a peer reviewed. Comment from reviewers can be very helpful for improving the quality of your vineyard and the latest software. So I'm not sure um, um, when you submit your vineyard to statistical software or those journal, is this considered as journal or they just review your vineyard and send you back? What is the meaning of this? Yeah, actually, you can write a full research paper inside the vineyard and, uh, okay. and getting peer reviewed. It's just a form of improving the quality. Mm -hmm. Also, there are other um, other scientific journals that accept like this this kind of vineyard format for mm. for like a paper submission. Also, like all right, for a factor of thousand. They have a specific block. For Bioconductor and for our package that they accept the vintage format also. Okay. So it's a scientific publication. Yeah. Okay. So vintage is also um, considered in some ways scientific publication. Um, it, it's it, it's because uh, it, 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 this example that you gave it's a vintage that is specifically to the, the format that Chrome will accept as a package documentation, but. Just changing that the, the header, you can change the format for a you can okay. transform that on, on a book down or you can transform it in a PDF and you can send it to okay to a reviewer to right. A reviewer. Yeah. right. Yeah, I think especially several um, publications like F one thousand research and PRJ also accepts um like um a vignettes with a really com you know, Maybe Especially explaining how you can use a package as that. On, on, okay. a, on package development, if you are really developing a package for the community, uh, your vignette is supposed to be the, the full documentation of the, okay. the package and the user issue of the package. Okay, okay, right. So um, lastly, um, uh, concerning vignette, how to create it, um, you can use different ways to create vignette. Um, uh, we can use this from the console to create one, um, but yes, but hardly say it's really useful. Um, yeah, you can also use dev two build to create packet bundle with vignette, and also using GitHub dev tools instead of GitHub, you can use that. But using 
being a true. So you can see here, uh, we have three ways to using this one, using build, um, you can build a packet to create and build with vignette and uh, using this one. So what um, you guys have been using, because I don't know, this is the first time and I use the first one. Yeah, the, the, the main, uh, I think the main important point in, in, in that, the, of the, the difference between building with the DevTools build or, or, the, or when you install it from somewhere, is that when you are developing your package, you have to run the build command to to transform the markdown document in in, in the HTML or the PDF document that will be okay. there. Okay. But when you are installing it from Chrome or from GitHub, usually it's already built those documents. So yes. you don't build it again when you are installing the 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 okay the, the ready package. All so right. That's, that's what I'm but if, but if you want. You can force the, the install GitHub to build it. To, okay. So it will, will actually run the code. That's the difference. Because okay. when you install the package, you don't run the code inside the vignette. It okay. It's already okay. run when it okay. was built. Okay. So it's, but you... it's not necessarily is accurate or 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 it could be it could be accurate in a, in the last version, but not in the actual version. So all right. We have different. Voice. Okay, so in that case, if you want to build it, then you can post post it using this argument, right? Yeah. Okay. So sometimes it could fail, because sometimes the vignettes could use packages that they are just suggested and not and, and not imported. So, so sometimes you may not be able to actually build the the vignettes, or the vignette could use like a assistant tool, a, a tool outside of R, maybe. You're, you're not able to build it in, in your in your computer. Right, right. Um, lastly, you can have as many vignette as you like, but link them as cohesive whole. So that's why I reference to the package down website. I was thinking it is vignette because um, separate sections like here, the, um, um, uh, okay, let me share. Let me... I was thinking here, okay. So I was thinking this is because um, you can see uh, we have different sections. So um what do they mean you can have multiple vignettes and but yeah the the vignettes actually they are built in the article uh hold it up to the to the beginning of the page because okay. actually those functions documentation they came from the the r oxygen okay if, if you go to the oh, they're there on the ggplot to the, the ggplot two documentation if you go to the article bar on the Oh, yeah, they're, they're on the on the beginning. We'll go get get back to the beginning. You have articles on the yeah they're up there or to the right. Mm -hmm. You the have half right side of the panes. Uh, yeah, the go go up again. <laughs> yeah. I think you so, have to hover your mouse at the top region, so not scroll. Yeah. Yes. You, now you, you see, see articles on the beginning uh, on this the one. right side. Yes. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. Those are vignettes. Yeah, you, if you see oh. what have like these four vignettes that it's the okay. And, like I said, these aren't actually vignettes. It, it was built using vignettes. So all if these ones are vignettes. To, this one you click click the, the, that one. This this one is a vignette. Ah. If you see on the the there is, uh, on the beginning there is like uh, extending ggplot on, on the second line there is source vignettes slash extending ggplot you're seeing that the yeah. second line of the it, so it's saying which document generated that vignette but if you go inside your R studio and you type browse vignettes and put ggplot2 it will show you inside the R studio all the vignettes that the package contains Okay. And actually, if you go there and type browse vignettes, the within package that you are developing, it was supposed to show that the vignette that that you are developing it right now. Okay. Uh, browse. Use the browse vignettes with capital V. Yeah, this one. And, and write ggplot2 or within there. You, you have to use quotes. Use quotes. Yeah, I think that that's the best way to 
Wow. Well, I think you can, <laughs> wait. You can try the player. Not right. Okay. We're we starting the package without minutes. I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, if you see all of them, all, all of those are vignettes inside ah, the player package. Okay. So if you okay. click on the HTML, it will open like ah. it, it was a web page. So, so this is a vignette. Actually, yeah, this, this, is a, this is a built vignette. A, ah. a vignette that had the commands running and okay. output in a consistent way. Right. Okay. This is also, okay. Okay. So, so if you go to the source document, it will probably show the R Markdown document. Okay, and, and I it see. It also have this option of R code that it will extract the source. only the R code of the R doc, the R Markdown. In, ah, like a, yeah, if you like this one, you could save as an as an R. Okay, R, script. R yes. script and run it. Yeah. So what is the difference between this source? Is it not? Well, yes, this is the R Markdown document that can generate the, the HTML. The HTML. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So if at you, the end, if you get that source code and run the, I will the get this Niter, one. The Niter command, it will yes, the this HTML. one. Ah, yes. okay, okay. And so, this, it's automatically run when you build your package. When the vignette is inside the package with ah, the correct metadata, okay. the correct header, it will build. This one, during it the, will build this one automatically. Yeah. Uh, okay. So my question is um, uh, like this. Um, why do we create many opinion? For instance, um, is it like we take some smaller functions of the package and explain them in separate opinion? Uh, can you see that? Because here I can see we have many opinion for deployer. So uh, the, each opinion will explain yeah, actually, some subsection. Um, yeah, it's, oh, I, mm. there, there is not the one only way to do that, but usually like Deployer is a really rouge package, so you could yeah. build vignettes for family of functions, but also, for example, Deployer had a, a, a long history of development, so and, and actually they, they built different vignettes along the time, like every new major version, they release a new vignette. You can, mm. like they, they have one introduction, it's like uh, the basic level of using okay. of player, but they have like the advanced level, something like that. And but so inside the vignette, you can link one vignette to the other. So you have, for example, if you are writing a in the format of a scientific paper, you could separate what's methodology from what's re results and things like that, and, oh. and put a link in the end. In the end, you can link one vignette to the other. Yeah, so I have a question. Um, um, if I want to look for information about package, because is it package down that I will look into or I will look into Binet? Which one, um, for instance, now for ggplot, if I'm using in RStudio, I would just type Binet, browse video, I look. But this one, uh, maybe be, uh, the package down contains robust explanation about the package. So what is your suggestion? What do you think? Um, I think... um, actually, on the package down, you are not not necessarily it will contain all the vignettes. When you build the package down, you can choose which vignettes will, will, will be exposed there. So, not necessarily the package down reflects exactly everything that that's in the yeah. package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, pack, oh, wow. I would say package down is just a way to uh, compile everything together in one place. Okay. Okay. As vignette, I mean, it can take many forms. I'm pretty sure other than package down, there are other R packages out there that you can use to build every uh, this kind of website. But I would say if, um, if a document shows how a package is used to s solve a certain problem, mm -hmm. especially um, on the reason why the package has, uh, has to be built in the first place, then I would use that. And I think you would be surprised by how many packages in, I would say, for example, CRAN doesn't have any vignettes at all. So you okay. have to go to the documentation and see um, see for yourself, okay, maybe this function does this, maybe okay. this function does that. All right. But then, I mean, with those kind of packages that doesn't have a good documentation, it takes mm -hmm. longer for you to be convinced 
is this the really right package that yeah. I want to use for my yeah. problem? Yeah. Uh, I think it's really up to you as a package developer. If you want to, if you want your package to be easily adopted by the community, ah. I would say writing a well-written vignette is actually to your own benefit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, like Michael said, uh, actually, Cron don't obligate you in any way to write in a vignette. But actually, for example, Bioconductor, for submitting to Bioconductor, you, you need to have a vignette explaining at least the basic usage of your package. All right. So I suggest like um, even C run, um, as Michael said, um, needs to have, I mean, the rules that package needs to come with vignette because um, that is the way people will easily adapt, understand, and they are called it. As Michael said, it that uh, some packages don't have vignette. You need to go inside the code and understand some stuff. Um, I don't know. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, the basic documentation of a function, it, it's written with the um, R oxygen documentation, well, the, those. Right. Uh, okay. in, inside the, 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 the script itself. But mm. if, if you would have a, a Rouge example or Rouge documentation for specific functions, this document would be really cramped and it will not focus on the code itself. So Vignet is probably started as a way to extend that outside yeah. of the okay. Of the All right. Code. All right. Okay. Um, so but thank it, you. Dave. It actually expanded on thinkable ways. You can do everything. You can do anything <laughs> with Vignet's. Yeah, thank you very much. So, yeah, um, this is a nice um, discussion uh, on Vignette. <laughs> and, and actually, one one way of using Vignette that that's probably the most useful way is while you, you are developing your package, you already write the the Vignette. Like, um, you use your Vignette to, to test what you are, you are developing. If you develop a new function in your package, already right there on the vignette how to use it, what's the command, what's the, what are the arguments, yeah. why yeah. you develop the picture. And in the end, you, you already have the, the vignette. Yeah, so food. my suggestion is, um, as the first cohort said, um, this is the best way to actually run through this chapter 6 and 11. To me, this is not the best way to discuss vignette at this moment. Vignette should be discussed after you finish everything to me uh, concerned the package you develop it. And so, that, I mean, now you are at the start of developing the package. You just start. So why will you, use, I mean, do the documentation now? We do documentation after we finish. So, so what do you think you guys? <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's the exact point that I was trying to bring. That um, if, if you already have all your code developed, everything tested, it's actually another step to write the documentation, to write the vignettes. But if you do the opposite, if you go writing the documentation while you are developing, okay. mm -hmm. it's easier. And in the end, when your code is running and everything is functioning correctly, you will already have it documented and, and tested. Okay. And so, so actually, for a software development perspective, it's easier to do everything at once and it's starting earlier. Actually, you don't you don't need to have the code to document it. You, if you have the ideas and you can write the ideas in right. the Markdown document, yeah. yeah so um, I, it will I, actually help you to develop a better code because yeah, your code so, will reflect what you're. Yeah, writing. yeah. So I remember one point Hadley made um, in the chapter where he said, "Okay, while you are coding your scripts and." Um, you it, it becomes boring so just go back and write um uh, your documentation just write the english you know so uh, how do you also um set state this um when it is boring the coding just go back to vineyard and write um, uh something there so that uh, you can fresh uh, refresh your mind and come back to the package and continue working on it so i think maybe it um but michael yeah, what do you think really good <laughs> um yeah well, I would say start from the documentation first because if you if you can like really show um, how the package would be used in practice, then I would imagine people would easily um, like understand. Okay, so this is uh, the step of the data analysis where I should use this package. 
and you don't really have to look into the functions and really guess because sometimes I think I have to do that to really look into the functions and then, okay, this function is doing this, this function is doing that. And it's not nice from the user perspective. Maybe from a developer, it's nice because yeah, as long as you publish a package, I think especially for many statistics um, package, where the documentation is actually the journal article that accompanied that package, but that they don't really put um, like a vignette in the um, uh, in the R package, maybe because they think okay, we have uh, made an entire peer-reviewed article, but. To me, okay. sometimes there is a huge discrepancy between like um, between running a statistical analysis and also interpreting the output um, of what we are actually seeing. I would sometimes, but yeah, I think I would. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah. That, 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 that's right. I, like Shin, Shin's already. If it's the first time that you are trying to get your uh, bigger scripts into functions and into a package, probably it's not the the best way to to start with the vignette. First, you you need to to have like the within package. Yeah, <laughs> to just have a, a raw a code function in a package, but. After that, that point, when you are already comfortable with the package structure, it, it actually becomes easier if you develop using the Vignette approach. To... Yeah. All right. So we are yeah. running out of time today. Um, some people want to go? Or... Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I don't know, but Michael last week, he said, okay, we are free to just chat a bit. and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this a uh, Zoom call, ha the Zoom uh, account has been paid by the community, so <laughs> feel free if you want to stay. If they don't kick us out, it's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, but Michael, I like this. Your um, uh, speaker is your voice is so vivid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's so vivid and clear. <laughs> well, I'm not paid or endorsed by any means uh, by the microphone manufacturer, so <laughs> yeah. I, I, I couldn't, it's yeah, just... It, it makes a huge difference yeah. on, the, on the audio quality, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, so what is the next chapter? Who is going um, to... I'm the one who's going to present it, but I okay. forgot yeah. the exact title. Uh, one moment. All right. It's the... Uh, writing functions and documenting. Yeah. Oh, writing functions. Object documentation. Yeah, actually, um, maybe this object documentation could actually be presented before the vignette because actually the, the vignette is like an extension of the object documentation. Ah, but, well, yes. I agree with you. That is true. I agree with you. I yeah, Lisa, I agree with you. Mm. For, 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 I, yeah, what I said. For, first, you, you need to actually learn how to document functions. Functions, yes, yes, yes. yes. But, yeah, yeah. I think. Well, if I see um, John's presentation. Would, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, um, if when I see when I saw uh, John's presentation on how he presented this uh, chapter six and eleven. He actually um, start from the all the um, cleaning the whole cleaning helpers uh, analysis, and then he try. So it's sort of like a vignette, right? Because uh, you have uh, you read the data, you process, and then you uh, write your data. And um, the way he presented, with the way he presented, it it kind of makes sense because you're. Uh, trying to, okay, so this is from a, a raw R script that you use for your daily analysis, and then you take away the script that you use um, as the helper function yeah. into a function, and so he's showing it systematically, okay, so if you have, if you already have an analysis script and you, you want to um, you want to make it into a package, how will it be? But then of course, if you are not starting from that point, but you're just starting from um, a blank slate, so starting from scratch, and you don't really have this um, 
like already not existing. Yeah, existing. Yeah. Exist in- so it's yeah. a bit confusing if you we have to follow this. I think it it can be, um, yeah, there can be some uh, remark yeah. uh, posted yeah. about this. Yeah, I saw Jones also. I watched his own, and uh, he, he was also sure was saying, "You can see that at the end, if I'm crazy, the way I do, <laughs> the way he does the uh, his own presentation." Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, which chapter? So, um, you gonna do um, chapter uh, seven and what? Seven, ten, and thirteen. Yeah. Oh, three chapters. Apparently, yeah, but yeah. they are actually pretty related, so yeah. okay. Yeah, All right, it's doable. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. now I'm, um, I'm uh, now today I will go and start. As I told you, I'm, uh, I'm doing my package, <laughs> the first package. <laughs> I will nice. go now. I'll start writing my vignette nice. and my vignette and my script. Um, I will ping you guys if I have any questions, so that yeah, because um, I'm learning um as I go. Because this is my first um, package <laughs> journey. Especially not... when you start doing it, you will have some insights. Uh, so okay. Please share with, with us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and, yeah. and thanks to you too, Shamshuddin. Yeah. Thank you, Michael. So I think um, it's time <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so I think I see you all next week. And uh, if I have a question, I will ask you guys. Sure. See you next week. And if any of you celebrates it, happy Easter. And okay, also yeah. Friday happy yesterday. Ah, <laughs> bye. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, week. ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. See you next week. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. <laughs>